You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, the founder of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business marketing automation, where we focus on turning digital marketing professionals into automation service providers. And in this episode, I want to give you a major key to increasing your your online conversions across the board. OK, um, and, and that is ensuring that all of your call to actions are placed within the proper context. Uh, we've talked about clarity of call to actions in previous episodes. I've hinted to it and alluded to it many times in, in, in those episodes, episodes. But today we're going to talk about context. OK, the, the operative word here, an important word is context. Um, so if you're new to the podcast, make sure you subscribe and share after you listen to this episode in its entirety, I want you to 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 get value and I want your five star rating and review to be worth something as well as your subscription. OK, so I, I'm not in it for the numbers. I want you to get real value from this podcast. And once you do, you can go into to Apple's app and leave a five star rating and review. You can also find the All Systems Go podcast in all major podcasting outlets, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, Automation Bridges on YouTube, and any other podcasting outlet. We are there. If you are a listener to the podcast and you have not left a five star rating and review yet, please do so now. Please do so now. If you leave out of your app, this podcast will continue to play in the background and you can jump into Apple uh, iTunes podcast, whatever they're calling it now, and leave that five star rating and review. It's greatly appreciated. It tells Apple that we are a podcast worth listening to in the marketing industry. And I don't know about you, but I, I watch, um, I get, I, I, I should say I read, I read all of these blogs and posts about the top marketing podcast. The all systems go podcast is not there yet. Everybody, it will, it will get there with my consistent consistency and your help, but also understand this is one of the most unique podcasts out there. That's giving you actionable and, and real strategies around marketing automation. Everything else kind of touches around other areas of marketing, but this is the only one that goes deep in marketing automation. So uh, I just wanted to highlight that, you know, and give you a little extra incentive to go leave that five star rating and review for all of you who have left a five star rating and review. It is greatly appreciated. Um, and I thank you for that. So let's jump into today's topic. And I want to start off by saying context matters. OK, context is everything. And, and we could see it apparent today more than any other time in society. Right. Whether it's religious, political, marital, people taking others struggle, experience, beliefs and feelings out of context is at an all time high. Right. We it's not uncommon to read a headline that's just a snippet of what something said or, or what happened, right? Just to get clicks and just to get people to, to read and consume, you know, somebody's bias review or bias view. Um, the, the most hilarious to me is I'm a, I'm a big sports guy. So on YouTube, I like to watch clips of, you know, uh, the, the sports talk, uh, uh, personalities and everything. And you could tell everybody wants to upload, the videos and and come out with a, a headline to really grab your attention. And most of the time, the headline is inaccurate or out of context. They love to use the words like um, uh, it, it'll say something like Stephen A. Smith appalled or uh, Shannon Sharp shocked or Skip Bayless incredulous. You know, they use all of these words and it has nothing to do. Nothing. You start to listen to the to the actual video 
and it had they're not appalled. They're not incredulous. They're not shocked. You know, they're literally just talking. But if they could just put a little hyperbole on some of those words and and take a little bit of a feeling and emotion out of context to get a to create a headline that people will click and and view. Uh, it happens all the time that that's more safe than some of these other headlines we see in society today. But but what but what is context and what does it have to do with with online conversions? Right. So that's what I want to do. Um, we know that it's it's something that's been going on, will continue to go on. In fact, you don't have to leave your front door often to be taken out of context. And it's one of the worst feelings. Right. You say something. Hey, I didn't mean it like that. You do something. And hey, how did you interpret what I did like that? Right. Can can we look at the full story instead of the just the isolated activity? Right. Um, so we live and deal with context daily. Uh, but I, I see a lot of people struggle making the connection with online conversions. All right. So let's start with Oxford's definition of the word context. OK. And it's a good one. It says context is the circumstance, the circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement or idea and in turn in terms of which it can be fully understood and assessed. Let me read it one more time. The circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement or idea and in terms of which it can be fully understood and assessed. So in short, it's the environment for easy understanding of what to do. Okay. What to do or what was done. But in this, this podcast, we're talking about creating an environment where it's easy to understand what to do. That's context. All right. And it's funny because calling CT call to actions or CTAs, I'll just refer to them as CTAs from now on, but CTA means call to action. Uh, Call referring to them as contextual is like calling water wet. (laughs) <laughs> right. It's it's straightforward. It's what you would think people know, because how could you not know water is wet? It's like the, the property you define water by being wet. Um, so you would a CTA, you would think context is embedded within that definition or understanding. Or is it to me a more experienced marketer? Sure. But but many overlook framing their CTAs in the in the proper context, yet still expect people to take massive action. Okay, so before I get too deep, let me define what a call to action is. Okay, I've already told you I'm going to refer to it as a CTA, um, but this may sound uh, very self-explanatory and reviewing for some. But a call to action in in the context of marketing is the single most important action you want someone to take after consuming content in any form. It is the sole purpose of, I should say the sole purpose of a landing page in marketing is to present a strong CTA. Okay. So it is the single most important action you want someone to take after consuming content in any form. Okay, that that is the definition I came up with, by the way. So you're not going to be able to search that and and find it that I I came up with that. And you have to be clear on what that single most important action is at all times that you want someone to take when after consuming content in any form. And this 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 may be maybe this didn't jump out to you. But with with all that being said, all of your CTAs must be presented in the proper context. Right. And that context comes with consumption. How can you ask somebody to do something and you haven't properly or accurately or effectively given them context, which is content to consume? How? How can you expect them to take any action? Right. And and this content doesn't have to be written. It can be oral. Right. It could it could be written. It it could be consumed by someone. Uh, it could be presented by someone other than you. Right. But there has to be consumption in order for context, in order for you to expect. 
someone to take action on what you outline and the the probability of this action is shaped by the context in which you put it in. Okay, so that there hopefully I didn't confuse you, but if you keep listening, it'll make sense. So what's this context? Let's take into account the following. All right. Now, remember, consumption, consumption is key here. All right. So what did they do before consuming the content? What did they learn by consuming the content and what do they need to do next? That's context. When when I'm when I'm talking about uh, contextual call to actions, the context that I'm speaking of that makes the, the the environment for easy understanding of what to do is shaped and created by clarifying what did they do before consuming the content? What did they learn by consuming the content? And what are you asking them to do next? You have to factor in all three. And what most people do is jump to the last. What do you want to do next? Okay, so context for CTAs is about before and after. Okay, and you really have to view your your call to actions in that sense. For for example, here's here's an example. Someone visits your landing page to take a quiz for assessing the, the profit, the profitability of their business. Right. The call to action is to take the quiz. However, in order for this call to action to be effective, we must factor in the before and after, a.k.a. the context. Right. So so what are some considerations for us to take beforehand? Is one is traffic. Right. Where did they traffic source? I should say, where did they come from? Because the power of the before is there. You Somehow there was an expectation created. Or else they wouldn't even be on the page to see the call to action or be in an environment where they can hear about the call to action. So how did they get there? And when you're thinking about how did they get there? What was the framing? Right. And, and by framing, that leads us to our second consideration is what messaging did they see that brought them there? What are they expecting to see? OK, so those three considerations are the source, the traffic source. Where did they come from? What messaging did they see that brought them to you? And what are they expecting to see? This is. This is before they even get to the call to action. You can't listen. You can't even craft a call to action, an effective one without taking that into account. Because all of this information, it shapes your design and copy on the page, on the button, on the slide, in your presentation, in your speech, whatever the content you're delivering. Okay. Or I should say, however you deliver your call to action, it's going to be informed by the three considerations of where did they come from? The traffic source, what messaging did they see that brought them to you and what are they expecting to see? And if you don't take this into account, you'll get a disjointed customer experience where people may be seeing one thing to get them excited. They click the link and what they land on is totally opposite. And even they're confused, like, wait a minute, did I click the right link? And that and that's why consistency creates conversions. Consistency in your messaging. Is crafting your call to actions in context with what somebody with the, the considerations of before they saw your 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 call to action. What changed? when they consumed it and what to do next. Right. And remember, I'm, I'm kind of framing this in, in uh, the context in which I'm speaking in is online, online conversions. Right. I said that. So we're talking about using web pages, landing pages to facilitate lead generation. So your, your call to action is going to more than likely be a button on a landing page that people would click and take action on. Okay. So, um, 
we've got our considerations for before. What are our considerations for while they're on the page? OK, so remember, how did they get to the page? What source? Because, you know, the same page, the expectation could be different based on the source. If you're coming to uh, one of my landing pages from Facebook, you may not have the intention span or intent as someone coming from LinkedIn. So the source matters. Right. And, and, and the messaging may be different. Right. And by messaging, images are messaging as well. Not just words, but imaging. What did they see? You know, and what are they expecting to see? So people on LinkedIn are a lot more buttoned up at times. You know, the, a lot more about their business. Facebook, 50 50, maybe 70 30, even less. Right. Business and fun. So we have to take that into account. All right. So what are the, some considerations for while they're on the page? Is it clear, concise and compelling that that's it? OK, is what you have to offer clear? And are you saying it in the most concise way? And is it compelling? Does, does it move somebody? Right. We're talking about this quiz for uh, the profitability of your business. If it's just like, hey, there's a new quiz I created. Take it. It's not compelling. Maybe if you pull a little, give me a little more. Right. And in in less than 60 seconds, determine the profitability factor of your business. And understand how much money you can make in the next 30 days. Right. Something like that. Now it's kind of like, mm, OK, well, it doesn't take long. That's compelling. I could do it in 60 seconds and I can I can get a forecast. Oh, OK. Right. Like that's copy, of course, but you have to take that into consideration when they're on the page. If you've done your before considerations. <laughs> right. So now. If it's clear, concise and compelling. Honestly, that's about as far as that. That's about as far as I'll go in this episode, I'll say, because what, what I could do is go on an extreme tangent about landing page optimization. That could be an episode in itself. And I believe uh, I believe we do have a episode on landing pages uh, earlier. So you may want to check that out. I'll put I'll put that link. I'll put the link of that one in the show notes. OK. Of that episode, because there, you know, I'm talking about clear, concise and compelling, but there's also structure to the page. Right. Color usage, formatting. You know, uh, writing bullet points is an art, things of that nature. But for the most part, when they get on the page, you want to make sure that you're it's clear, concise and compelling what you are asking them to do. And then the considerations for after, because remember, context is before, during and after. Right. We have to take all of that into consideration. So so here's where a lot of people fall off. OK, is afterwards they capture the lead. Then they start focusing on the email follow up. If, if any, some people believe it or not. Yes. In 2020, there are some people that will capture a lead and and think that that's they, they got leads. Good. Good job. Right. But you have to understand the next page they see is critical. Note, I did not say the next message. And we should all are you my avid listeners here, my true supporters. You know how I am about thank you pages. You if if you are connected to me in any capacity, if I've given value to your marketing career in any capacity, you're using a thank you page. You're not using one of those forms that just says, thank you for your information. Let me state this. There are times where that's OK. Not when you're trying to capture leads. OK, because I don't want people to be like, oh, I always need to use a thank you page. I would prefer that you always do. But more specifically, when you're capturing leads, you need to use a thank you page. OK, and that page needs to confirm their action. It needs to let them know what they just did or what they just assigned, what they just signed up for. And it needs to affirm them in their decision. 
this is all one call to action that you have to, you have to take this into account and when you do you're going to see your conversions increase i'm going to tell you why your conversions are going to increase in a minute okay but you're affirming them of their of their decision a lot of times it could be social proof immediate access to it right and then you want to tell them what's coming you should have framed what they get clearly and concisely and in a compelling fashion on the page. So when you tell them what's coming next, you know, and affirm their decision, it's very consistent, right? You're just letting them know, hey, look, you clicked a button, you left a page, you landed on, an, on, on an, another one and you're in the right place. OK, and the key the key is here when you tell them what's coming next or affirming their decision and confirming their action, things of that nature. You don't want to make them rely on checking their email to take the next step. You want to make it readily available for them in some way. Right. Somebody if somebody is opting in to the quiz, like I'm saying here, it's easy because the next page they see should be like the start of the quiz. And, and if you want to, you could have some supporting data there, you know, some social proof to say, welcome. So glad you decided to take the quiz like six thousand five hundred and eighty four other entrepreneurs. Enter your name and, email, you know, and, and click start or whatever the case is to to go. These are small things that you can do, but it strengthens somebody's probability to take action and keep taking action. When I'm talking about contextual call to actions, that's what they do. They get people to take action and keep them taking action because each call to action is a handoff to the next. Right. So when I say, what did they do before? Now you're going to see Oh, what they did before was a previous call to action. And if that call to action was effective, that call to actions def definition of what's next becomes the following call to actions consideration of before. <laughs> it's like a, you know, like a Venn diagram, right? I see all these uh, these call to actions as circles displayed horizontally overlapping and the overlap of call to action one is what to do next so call to action two's uh left most overlapping is what did they do right so these call to actions they speak to each other and they link through the before and after because a strong cta captures and prepares them for the next conversion event. And, and honestly, um, I may have said this before. I don't know. I, you, you know, I say so much. Who knows? But you, you do this well enough. An email follow up may not even be required to get them to take the next step. OK, there you, you know, there's levels to this. That is definitely a higher level. Where someone can take action immediately be placed with the next action to take and take it. That's only done contextually, everybody. You have to know that if, for instance, if somebody were to start the quiz that we're mentioning in this podcast and not do it, what is the consideration we need to take for the next call to action? Well, the call to action is to complete, complete it, right? Complete the quiz. You fell off. How do I know you fell off? Because I'm I'm paying attention to what you did before that brought you here. You saw the quiz. I know you're interested in profitability. You started. And for some reason, you stopped. I have to take that. That that starts to shape my context. OK, so now you're in your email inbox reading this email, which should be framing that. Hey, I know you get busy. Hopefully nothing happened. If so, let me know. Uh, but. Just in case, here's the link to pick up where you started off, to pick up where you left off. Click this link, fill out the quiz to get your profitability factor uh, so we can work with you to increase it. Whatever the case is. Right. 
But that call to action is contextual because it's speaking to what you did before and it's telling you what to do next. Right. And it's in a compelling way. It's different than, hey, uh, you didn't complete your quiz. Click here to finish it. Would that work? Possibly. I've seen it work in different industries, but why take the chance? Right. Every time you ask someone to do something, make sure you understand how they even got to the place where they could see what you're asking them to do. Acknowledge that. You don't have to always call it out explicitly. OK, you don't always have to say since you did X, Y and Z, you can just since you know what they did, you can assume what they know and speak to them like they know it. Right. I know profitability means something to you. Right. Be- because you were literally on the page that was there to take a profitability quiz. You entered your information. So I don't have to say, hey, you entered your information since you entered your information on my landing page. Now I can assume. Because the context is the context now is mm, you're interested in profitability. Because that you, you that was the, the precursor, that was the pre step. Right. So I can just say since profitability matters to you as it should. And then I go on with with the rest of my messaging. So this is crucial. This is crucial for email because you all know. Uh, let me not say that. Um Because I've always viewed I I use email as reinforcement. I do not drive people to email. I don't say, oh, I need them to open my email. I would rather people not open my email because that lets me know that my call to actions are sequenced strongly. One is properly preparing somebody for the next and they're taking action. Email is a reinforcement It's to fill in the gaps if they fall off. And now when you're drafting that email sequence, When you're drafting that that drip sequence or whatever you want to call it, every email now should be in context. And it's easier in email because, you know, the email you sent to them previously. (laughs) So, you know what they've seen. And if you want to get even more dynamic in your follow up, you can even look for if they opened or clicked. It's all contextual for that email. If you haven't opened the previous one. I need to acknowledge that in my single double blueprint. I walk through the logic and how to do this automatically. And what you'll see is you send an email, you know, for what they requested. And if they don't open it, they receive a different email than somebody who has opened it because the context is different. What you did before is different. One of you opened one of you didn't. So I want to talk to you differently. Hey, did you still want this if you didn't open it? But if you opened it, I see that you've seen it. And since you haven't taken action by maybe clicking or whatever, maybe I do another another uh, case where I say, have you opened and clicked? But in the digital field, the reason why contextual CTAs are the only CTAs that you should be creating is because you can track everything. So it really doesn't make sense for you not to be using all of this information when you're drafting your call to action. It doesn't. We're not traditional marketers where we did not have access or access to what was going on was very expensive because technology was very outdated. No, you can see. You can see the page that they opted in on. Why not use that to change your messaging? Listen, I track everything upon capture as much information as possible. I want to know it all because when we talk about crafting the customer journey, every time you ask somebody to do something, if it's not contextual, then it's not personal. It can't be personal without context. Right. You want that part. You want that lead to feel like he gets me. She gets me. They get me. Right. I get one of the the biggest compliments that I find is when people reply to my emails as if I wrote them to them personally. And sometimes I do. That's the beauty of it. You can't tell what's automated and not because every email I work hard to make sure it's contextual. 
There's no boilerplate. Even if I were to take somebody's template, I'm going to modify it and put it in context of that customer's journey. Where did they come from? What are they expecting to see? And what do I want them to do? I'm asking those three questions every single time. Every single time. And if we want to get advanced, uh, I'm, uh, this is at the end. We're, we're finishing up here, but you, I'm, I'm going now. You got me going. If you want to get advanced, then you'll you'll make dynamic web pages. Where the language changes based on the source. There is there's technology to do this that is very inexpensive. A lot of WordPress page builders do this. People just don't understand how to do it using URL parameters. And then there's software dedicated to it that will change your entire messaging if they see that they came from Facebook. They see they came from Twitter. They see they came from Instagram. It could put entirely different messaging. Why does software like that exist? If it didn't understand the importance of context in with your call to actions. You have to do this. What what did they do before that brought them here? What are they doing? What are they consuming and what am I asking them to do? That's every call to action. You better not type. Copy for another button, another link, another whatever, without thinking through those three considerations. You can't do it because consistency in your messaging is key. And the only way to keep it consistent is to keep it contextual. Online conversions can be thought of as an online conversation taking place across multiple digital assets. The next digital asset must pick up from where the previous left off. You got to have the handoff. The handoff only comes when you think and craft things contextually. All right. So who needed to hear this? Okay, who is that person that specializes in online conversions? They're always talking about lead generation and traffic and, you know, or or flip it. Who's the person that's struggling? Because, you know, if they're always talking about it, they may be a little glass full, a little hard headed. Right. But who's the person that's struggling? They, they just can't seem to figure it out. They just can't get right in the area of lead generation. For whatever reason, they, they've. They got the landing page templates is beautifully designed. They've got the call to action. They've got the buttons above the fold. They've got, you know, what looks appears to be compelling copy to them. And it's just not working. There's a great chance that they're out of context. And when you're out of context, your conversions. Do fail. OK. I and mean, that's just what it is. So who's that person? Some of you may know them from what the words that they've spoken, but some of you may have gone to their web assets and identify. Like, Ooh, I don't think you know what you think, you know. <laughs> right. This could be the case. So whoever that person is, whoever that person who's struggling with lead generation is. Send them this this episode. It's it's for if they're the CEO, it's going to inform them on what what they should be looking for and help them and guide and instruct their marketer that much better. If they're a marketer, it's going to help you. Listen, this you're going to level up. With everything that you learned in this in this episode, you just leveled up if you put it into action. I'm not exaggerating. I'm serious. I will take an additional five minutes to make sure that the messaging in my email, on my landing page and my text message, whatever is crafted in the proper context. And 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 one thing that I did not mention because I did, it was so much, but context changes based on segment. Somebody somebody just got tingly foot footed toes started started moving like, ooh that was good. <laughs> right. That was good to me. I, I really did. I, I held myself back. I was about to give you all one of these. Woo! I was about to give you one of those. Context changes. Based on segment. So go back and listen to my segmentation podcast and understand the power when when we're when we're drafting this customer journey. It's one of the reasons why uh, this word, it's so big, but there's so much in it. 
information we're capturing. How does that information put them into the segments and how does each segment change the call, the context in which I'm placing the call to action? Then how do each how do the differing segments perform? How do you how do you do all of that? It's not a simple click of a button or a simple, hey, I just got this new platform. This takes some intentional planning, some acumen around automation and execution and just overall attention to details like I mentioned here. And that's why here at Automation Bridge, we're dedicated to training digital marketing professionals on matters like this. At a deep capacity, this is what we mean when we say become an automation service provider. That is what an automation service provider knows. They know how to craft that journey. They know how to keep their call to actions contextual. They know how to how to do dynamic segmentation. They know how to send messaging to anybody at any point throughout the customer journey that's contextual and will elicit the 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 it will increase i'll say the probability of them taking action at any point that's what we do and that's what small businesses are in dire need of they need that they need people who can craft these these journeys online by 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 learning the the marketing and technology how they play together and creating systems to deploy in an automated fashion for rapid growth So if that is you, time is now. Go to automationbridge.com forward slash ASP. That's for automation service provider. Automationbridge.com forward slash ASP to take the next steps. And uh, what what we'll do is you'll talk to someone on on my team to assess uh, if you'd be a good fit for our program and community. Okay, because the time is now. The need is greater than it's ever been. I just don't want you to be left out. OK, but selfishly. I want. I want to clone <laughs> all that I know in as many people as possible that as, as I guess that's not selfish, huh? but it is. That's what I desire to do. Outside of anyone else, any prompting that that is my desire, my, my motive, my push, my driver. Listen to me when I say this, the information, the information that I have accumulated over the last seven to eight years in the startup space. You're not going to easily find it, understand it or know how to apply it. Less you join a community and, and, and get into one of these programs. I'm just being honest with you. I just want you to know that in your journey as you're out looking. Just know that. OK, there's a place for you. <laughs> I have prepared a place for you already. All right. So all the show notes to this podcast are accessible at automationbridge.com uh, forward slash podcast. Not only this podcast, but all podcasts. You can also subscribe there and listen to all other episodes at your leisure. All right. So until next time where I see you online, automate responsibly, my friends. <laughs>